Edson Barboza may have just pulled off the craftiest performance I've ever seen from a veteran fighter. And for that reason, that's that's the kind of performance that's going to give you respect from the fans for the rest of his time on this planet. All right. And I mean it. I talk about craftiness. I talk about crafty vets. That performance from Edson Barboza against Sadiq Yusuf had everything. The epitome of craftiness. And what do I mean by that? A crafty vet is a guy that's going to be able to weather the storm from an up-and-coming, hungry, young fighter that's got more athleticism, that's got a you know a quicker twitch ability at their youth. Edson got the shit beat out of him early. And also, let's just say this, the Lucas Tracy curse, it's coming to a halt because I just got my first main event correct since the TKZ Holloway fight. It's Barboza. 48-46 is Barboza because there's a 10-8 there. Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Woo! On top! All right, so let me just give myself that one moment. But guys, Edson Barboza got the pulp beat out of him early in this fight. And I thought it was basically done. I was starting to get a little bit down in the dumps. Watching this fight with Sadiq Yusuf, he messed up Edson Barboza, knocked him down in the first round. We saw Edson's head going in the, we saw his eyes going in the back of his head, I mean. And not only did he have Edson Barboza on Crip Street, but he had Edson's body language sh all shaky and wobbly. And I started making fun of him and calling Wobblestone Cobblestone Edson Barboza. Yeah, Sadiq Yusuf's getting tired. Barboza's starting to walk him down. You know, it's an issue when old Cobblestone Wobblestone Edson Barboza starts walking you down. You pick Wobblestone Cobblestone to win? I know. Old Wobblestone Cobblestone Barboza's actually winning that round. And as soon as I really started to pick up that kind of banter with my chat, we noticed that Edson started to come back in the fight. He started to swear on Sadiq Yusuf. He started to throw more body kicks. He started to throw more jabs to the body. And then he started ripping to the body with his hooks that were landing on the ribs of Sadiq Yusuf. He worked his way back into the fight. And then in the third round, he starts imposing his will on Sadiq Yusuf and he lands this spinning wheel kick to knock Sadiq Yusuf down and gets himself a 10-8 round. And not only that, he kind of messed up that finishing sequence, by the way, because he jumped on a submission instead of following up with ground and pound. I feel like ground and pound would have been a better thing for him to do against Sadiq Yusuf there. But what really impressed me most was that he had a really tough fourth round, and it looked like Sadiq Yusuf started coming back a little bit more with his jab. The jab of Sadiq Yusuf looked amazing. But Edson Barboza, despite having a tough, gritty fourth round, went out there in the fifth, started to outland Sadiq Yusuf, and as a crafty veteran would do, knowing that he banked the beginning of that round, he opted to go for takedowns, and with only a couple minutes left in the fight, he knew that he could expend all of his energy and basically just resorted to trying to ragdoll Sadiq Yusuf, not doing a whole lot with the grappling, but picking him up and slamming him down because, well, what's the worst that's going to happen if you lose your gas tank? And I have to say, that performance is going to go in the Craft Hall of Fame, okay? Because, you know, we talk about crafty vets like Jim Miller and all that, but th th that, that deserves a ton of respect. Edson took a lot of damage early in that fight. He weathered the storm. And for a 37, 38-year-old Barboza, who's known for having a weak gas tank, to go out there, to make those adjustments, to weather the storm, and make crafty decisions in that fight as well, especially that of the one that we saw in the fourth and fifth. At the end of the fourth round, I didn't mention this, but Barboza landed like 10 strikes in the last 30 seconds and really turned up the heat to close off the round with a bang. And we also saw the ring generalship, and I wanted to just give Edson Barboza a ton of credit for beating Sadiq Yusuf because it was unbelievably impressive. It's kind of funny because this was probably my least confident main event pick that I've made for a while. I don't remember the last time I was this unsure on a main event, but I ended up picking Edson Barboza. Hopefully we can bring the curse back a little bit next week, maybe, because I am going to be picking Islam Makhachev, and I do think Makhachev's going to win. I think the MMA gods are too cruel to let Volk win, and I'm going to be making my prediction for that soon. I'll do a breakdown, but my point is, I kind of want to be wrong next week, but I don't think I will be. I think I'll be right. I think Makhachev's going to get it done. Uh, and another fight that really impressed me was Andre Petrosky and Michelle Pereira. First minute KO. Really impressive. Um, Andre Petrosky. I don't think he's that good, man. I think his striking is pretty mid. He beat Gerald Mearshart via puncher's chance. He was losing the majority of that fight. And 
got himself a knockdown in the second round where he was losing that round and he lost the third round and he was getting outstruck by Mearshart as well and out grappled by Mearshart. No, no shame in getting out grappled by Mearshart, but he also had this pretty boring snooze fest with Wellington Terman and I just don't think he's that good, man. I think that uh, Andre Petrosky is a guy that would have been able to make it to the top of the middleweight division in the 2018 to 2020 era. You know what I mean? He kind of represents the old guard of the modern middleweight division. Jack Hermanson types, right? The Andre Muniz coming up and Dan Hardy talking about, you know, I think Andre Muniz is the guy to give easy problems, right? That's what Andre Petrosky represents. I think Michelle Pereira, although he was coming up in the same time, he's a guy from welterweight that has that welterweight speed, the welterweight skill. And I just think he's a freak of nature. And now that he's moving up, he's one of these guys that seems to have even more power because we haven't seen him knock anyone out like that in forever. I mean, we, we've seen this guy land a lot of shots in the welterweight division and have back and forth decisions and split decisions with different guys. We haven't seen a finish like this from Pereira in forever. And he looks massive for 185. He's shredded too. A lot of guys move up a weight class. They don't look as lean. He looks just as lean, but just he's filled out really well. And I think he's going to be killing it at middleweight, man. I'd really like to see him fight uh, someone like Joe Pfeiffer. I want to see that. That'd be an amazing matchup. I feel like Joe Pfeiffer just got the uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan matchup. And I think I'd like to see him fight Pereira because I feel like Joe Pfeiffer's kind of shown that he's better than Petrosky. He trains with Petrosky, by the way, but Petrosky's not that good. I feel like he's kind of mid. Um, another fight that I was very impressed with, and I have to talk about this right now, was Jonathan Martinez destroying the legs of Adrian Giannis. I picked Adrian Giannis to win this fight. I got this one wrong. I'm never sleeping on Jonathan Martinez again. Full violence called Jonathan Martinez the dark horse of the Bantamweight division after his last fight with Saeed Nurmagomedov. And I said to myself, I, I think they're giving him too much hype. That's a typical full violence, you know, try to be super edgy type of post. And I think they're right because I haven't seen leg kicks that are this effective in MMA in a long time. I mean, we're, we're talking about the best leg kickers in the game. That would be an understatement. It, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be enough justice to put him in the group with people like Jan Blahovich, to put him in the group with guys like you know who have really good leg kicks like Volkanovski, Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira's leg kicks may look a little bit prettier because they're, they they have no telegraph to it. Jan Blahovich's leg kicks may look like they're heavier. But they're not as effective. I think that Jonathan Martinez has the most effective leg kicks in MMA right now. I mean, five leg kicks and Adrian Yanez's leg had given out completely. And he started flopping around and, and dropping on the deck like a fish. Like, I haven't seen someone just beat someone to a pulp like this with just leg kicks. And this is the second time he's TKO'd somebody with leg kicks as well. He did this against Cub Swanson not too long ago. And we really have to start thinking about Jonathan Martinez as being that guy in the bantamweight division that has the ability to go out there with such a basic technique like the leg kick that also doesn't put you in harm's way that much. You don't have to commit to it that much, but it's so unbelievably effective that people are really going to have to start thinking about how to check it, how to, how to stop this attack from him. Because the guy's a freak of nature when it comes to that part of his body, that limb. He's got like these iron shins. I mean, we talk about Jan Blahovich again as being like this freakishly good leg kicker and Alex Pereira, but these guys aren't TKOing people with leg kicks like this. I mean, you just can't get leg kicked by him. And I'm never going to write Jonathan Martinez off. What does this say about Adrian Giannis? He just couldn't do shit about it. He couldn't do shit about it. Within a couple of minutes of that fight, he was on stilts. He was on wobbly legs. He didn't have his feet underneath him. And Jonathan Martinez was able to stuff the takedowns from Adrian Giannis pretty easily, who tried to change the tide with that, and he was just able to keep it on the feet and TK home. I think that Martinez is a guy that I'm really trusting to be one of the dark horses of that division. I mean, think about Piotr Jan. He got his legs chewed up by Marab the Velashvili in their last fight. You don't want to be getting leg kicked by Jonathan Martinez. Imagine O'Malley getting leg kicked by Jonathan Martinez. Amazing performance from Jonathan Martinez. The most effective leg kicks in MMA right now. He literally tied Edson Barboza for the record, for most leg kick TKOs in UFC history. And Edson Barboza is 38. Martinez is 29. So he's probably going to go on to have even more leg kick TKOs. And he's going to get even better too. Some of the most effective leg kicks we've ever seen from him. 
And one of the things I notice is that he kind of aims at the kneecap level, which is maybe something to think about. But both halves of Adrian Yanez's body has been absolutely destroyed in his last few fights. His legs got torn to shreds in this one, and he got his head knocked off against, you know, uh, Rob Font in his last one. It's just he's had a rough go. He's been taking on, you know, these these monsters recently. Let's give him a, a bit of a step back in competition, but not too much. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe Adrian Yanez versus Christian Rodriguez. That might be a pretty interesting fight. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. The card overall was amazing. I didn't even think I was going to make a recap video, but while I was making my recap video for the Dylan Dennis Logan Paul fight, and I just did that because I figured, you know, I was I was thinking that Dennis's striking was so unbelievably pathetic it needed to be covered. But I was watching the main card while I was making the video. Cameron Simon takes his first loss. Cameron Simon should not hang his head low. I just think that Christian Rodriguez is that good. Really. I mean, Christian Rodriguez, we saw him kind of son Raul Rosas Jr. in the second and third round of their fight. And Raul Rosas Jr. bounced back looking like a world beater on the feet, for his age at least, a world beater on the feet. Uh, Cameron Simon posted on his Instagram that he's sorry. Nothing to hang your head low about. I mean, he, he still had a really tough, gritty performance. There were a lot of good scrambles there. Cameron Simon's cardio looked great. His grappling looked great. It's just that Christian Rodriguez were on him a little bit in the striking. I really enjoy the UFC fight night. We have a lot of UFC 294 content to make, but I'm going to try to get this video out as soon as possible. Until next time. What is up, guys? It's Lucas Tracy MMA here, and I want to let you guys know that I have something for you, and that's a real food cookbook, because if you're walking around looking like Chris Dawkins, you got to get that weight off. I don't know if you think you're DC or something, but most people usually don't perform at their best when they're walking around with 30% body fat. So if you're trying to lean out and you still want to eat good, tasty comfort foods, well, you could check out my Real Food Cookbook because I've made it a purpose to have good, tasty foods that you can still eat just without all the processed bullshit, without all the processed ingredients like soy and seed oils. So guys, check out the Real Food Cookbook. Use code MMA for 30% off. The link is in my description. Don't forget that discount.